Welcome back. You're watching the news at 10 on Channel Television, reaching you live from Lagos. While the contractor handling the presidential intervention clean cook, cook stoves meant for rural women in Nigeria is on collision course with the Ministry of Environment. He says the ministry is not in a position to cancel the now controversial 9.2 billion naira contract. While the Ministry of Environment had earlier given indications that it would terminate the contract for the distribution of the 750,000 clean cook stoves and 18,000 wonder bags. Our correspondent Gloria Umezuke reports. In 2014, the Federal Executive Council approved the sum of 9.2 billion naira for the procurement of 750,000 clean cook stoves and 18,000 wonder bags to be distributed free to rural women. That announcement was greeted with mixed reactions. We need a, something that I should just say as a stove like this. Because this thing that you are seeing that we are cooking with is, that's all our women are cooking with it, is, is affecting us. Many people accepted the good news to deliver a safer environment and perhaps jobs to the teeming jobless Nigerians. But controversy began when the former Minister of Environment said only first ladies of each state would be responsible for the distribution, leaving many to speculate how less transparent the process might become. Then the actual contract appeared to have loopholes. But it's hard to note that the entire process was a bit shady in the sense that there was no transparency and accountability in the process. At first, we had started convening a stakeholders meeting to bring together the contractor, which is Integral Renewable Energy, the Ministry of Environment, and other key stakeholders. Signing or approving that sum of money and wanting to gain public confidence. It's important to make things open and transparent. The story of a 9.2 billion Naira cook stove has taken another twist. The Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Environment gave indications ahead of the 2015 World Environment Day that the project would be terminated owing to failure to deliver. But the contractor who spoke off camera said the project cannot be terminated. If you count from the time we mobilized it to 26th of May 2015, you will know that the tenure of the agreement has lapsed. By 26th of May, we take it that the contract has elapsed, and just we've written to, the, to him. And if by the end of the week, we he fails to get back to us, the, the bond is expiring next month. We have also put the back on notice that we we'll come back our bond. Um, there is no information as regards cancellation before me. There has, there, there's no letter. There is no information whatsoever to that effect. So I, I doubt within the uh, contemplation of that project if the permanent secretary can, on her own, cancel a contract that was awarded by the federal government and uh, the third contract was uh, recently launched so i i am not sure that um, that that is possible the laudable project has continued to swing unsteadily in the last two months the government has however been advised to straighten every gray area to adequately address the huge challenge that lies in the sector gloria umezuke channels television news oh no the community health insurance scheme program of the Kwara state government which allows individuals to pay an annual sum of 500 naira to benefit from any medical treatment has received a boost with the coming on board of 100,000 enrolls all oh, the program which started in shunga edu local government area of the state targets 500,000 patients in the next two years it all began seven years ago. The former governor, Bukola Saraki's administration, partnered with foreign organizations to kickstart the Community Health Insurance Scheme. And how does it work? With as little as 500 naira per year, beneficiaries will get treatment for ailments. The number of those that enrolled has now swollen to 100,000 people, and it also particularly benefits rural dwellers. The program is uh, 
is wonderful because the type of drug given to us, even people were complaining, ah, their drug is good. Their, their drug, I want the type of drug they are recommended to me. If I use it, the drug is okay. And at the same time, the, the type of get sure that the, the, uh, the doctor and the, the workers of this uh, health program, the, the way they attend to them, the way they care for them, people, people really enjoy it. And other partners of the program laud the Kwara State Government for the initiative. We were able to seek, um, a, uh, get a grant from the Dutch government and uh, with very good partners like Hajia Community Healthcare, the Kwara State Government, we were able to design um, a health insurance scheme which today has been able to en enroll over 100,000 enrollees. We have covered not less than 100,000 enrollees who have benefited uh, positively uh, through uh, health care services which uh, was given to them. These enrollees, they are today very happy and delighted with the scheme and with the state government. While it is true that a healthy state is a wealthy state, the government believes progress will continue to be made in the health sector with the Community Health Insurance Scheme and a projection of 500,000 participants in the next two years. Well, tears flowed freely recently in many homes in River State following the shocking incidents of sudden death that occurred in some communities in the state after some persons were said to have consumed dog meat and locally made gin. Well, at the last count, as many as 30 people have died, causing panic in the area. The River State Ministry of Health has called on the residents of the state to remain calm and to stop the consumption of the locally made gin for now. Our correspondent visited Woji community, one of worst hit areas in the crisis, and now reports. Etisola, now you're talking. All appears normal in the streets with people going about their businesses peacefully. Welcome to Woji community in River State. But beneath the seeming calm is an undercurrent of sorrow following recent reports of people dying after consuming locally made gin known as a gogoro. On Sunday, one of the one of my tenants here, you know, I saw him on Sunday about 1:30. Um, I was I scolded him. I said, "Why is it that you didn't tidy up your environment?" And he. He didn't reply, he didn't respond. And the way he was behaving, I, I thought he has, as usual, taken the kai kai. At about 1.30, they took, brought him back from where he went to and was dying. At that point, we rushed him to a clinic somewhere in uh, Obatai, once a Mary clinic. There, the doctor examined him, discovered that, uh, in fact, told us we should take him to teaching hospital. On our way to teaching hospital, he gave up. It all began on that, on that Sunday when most of them went to take some drink. After taking some drink, they started hearing issues, um, people dying one after the other. I think uh, the first person that died um, by name, Fabian, he died that Sunday night. On the morning time, another guy died, Ben. On, the, um, on Monday afternoon, another guy that is closer to me, called Scatter uh, Jackson, also died. Um, after that day, on Wednesday, another two persons also gave up on Wednesday. The drinking sport is now a shadow of itself owing to an alleged attack by some angry residents. Still, there are telltale signs of used pots and a fireplace perhaps used for roasting the dog meat. 44-year-old John Chime tells us how lucky he is to be alive. Me, actually, uh, that after I took the thing, the the fear of uh, the boy's death now entered so people are dying people are dying so now my in-law now asked me Ladies, there's no time waste let's go to hospital they took me to uh other uh, 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 george uh, peter Odele road for a medication they gave me some things uh, medicine to calm the situation down that night after which i come back since then, I've been having rolling stomach, pains from my system. 
They now took me to Capino. The team was worried. They took me to Capino. Now they diagnosed me and flushed up the whole of my wood drip. In a meeting with journalists, the permanent secretary, Minister of Health, put a figure to the reported death toll. In Obiapo, we have 11 cases, nine males, one female, 10 died. Old Abbots die hard, they say, as our cameras catch a group of men at another drinking spot in the community in high spirits. Some, though, will not allow the merriment to disturb their game. Our journey takes us to the home of the only female among the dead. At a grave site, we are greeted by an 87-year-old mother and our 8-year-old son, who tries to tell us how he feels about his mother's death. It's painful. One of the community leaders believes it's time to stop the consumption of the local image. My advice is that they should keep off from this. It's better to stay alive. I don't even know what they derive from it. A regular habit of taking native gene kai kai every time. This is the doggy man spot already raised down by angry youths. We are told that an average of 30 people used to gather here every evening to enjoy the dog meat delicacy and the locally processed gene called Ogoguru. Unfortunately, what used to be a place of fun had become an altar of death. And the residents here are calling on the relevant authorities to ensure that this doesn't happen again. Emmanuel Ire, Channels Television News. Etisola, now you talking. Well, moving on now, traditional rulers in the oil producing areas of Aquaibon State have pledged their continued support for the Niger Delta Development Commission, the NDDC. Well, the royal fathers under the traditional rulers of oil mineral producing communities of Nigeria gave the NDDC their vote of confidence for its development efforts in the Niger Delta region. They offered the assurances at a meeting with the NDDC Managing Director, Fasi Dan Abia, at the Palace of the Paramount Ruler. This is the palace of the Edidem Akwabio Ukpa. The people of this community have come in their numbers to witness the occasion and catch a glimpse of the man at the helm of the affairs at the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC. Seated is the host, 91-year-old Edidem Akpabio Upa and members of his traditional council. Speaking through his assistant, the paramount ruler of Ikorabasi, Edidem James Ntuubong, revealed that the traditional rulers' council played a key role in the establishment of the NDDC and therefore sees it as a duty to continue to support the agency. As the founding fathers of the NDDC, we wish to once again reassure you of our support at all times. We pray that the Almighty God, in his infinite mercy and grace, will surely guide guard and protect you and your family throughout your tenure in NDDC and beyond. The good Lord will use you as a source of consolation to rewrite the dignity and better history of a state in NDDC at the end of your tenure. On his part, the NDDC Managing Director, Basi Dan Abia, promises to sustain the existing relationship with the traditional rulers in the overall interest of the Niger Delta region. A new region. He expressed appreciation for the support of the group and urged them to extend their support to the newly elected leaders at the federal level and the Niger Delta states in the interest of peace and development. My appeal the new royal fathers to please support all the government of the region, the various states of the region, within the Niger Delta region, and of course, very strong, unconditional support to the government at the center, Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, is an agency of federal government. It is in our interest for us to support the government of the day so that we can collaborate 
to develop the Niger Delta region. <laughs> this is the first visit of the NDDC boss to any paramount leader or group since he assumed office as the managing director of the commission. Well, charcoal has been used since earliest times for a large range of purposes, including cooking, industrial fuel, and medicine. Uh, art also falls under its usage, and one sculptor has been using this natural resource, uh, along with other materials such as fiber, cloth, dye, jute, and wood, to pass his message. Well, Ivo Bodo's exhibition titled Line by Line explores the essence of time in its past, present, and future forms. It was organized in Lagos by art auctioneers, Art House Contemporary. Art Review tonight looks at time through the works of sculpture, Ibo Bodo. The appreciation of art is as easy as it is complex. And it takes a mind that understands this to value the creativity of Eva Obodo. His exhibition, Line by Line, is a fusion of time. Eva successfully reconstructs the past and present, generating imageries that shed light on the future. Piece by piece, bit by bit, and line by line, time is exposed through nature with charcoal and fiber being the mediums of expression. He also has fun with materials such as jute, cotton, and dye. In this exhibition, I am coming up with a body of work that tries to bring two materials together, fiber and charcoal. In charcoal, I deal with beads pieces, bit by bit. In fiber, because of the strands and uh, because of the fiber nature, that one runs in lines. So that is why it is bit by bit, line by line, and piece by piece. The conveyor of this exhibition is Art House Contemporary, the former auctioneers of artwork. Its CEO, Kavita Chalaram, speaks on how the artist first caught her eye and his creative prowess. In fact, I was... Uh shown his works by Ellen Atsui, who works in the same university, in Suka University, in, uh, in Suka. And it's amazing that we've been able to showcase works from other parts of the country. Otherwise, here in Lagos, it's quite insular, and you get works that people have seen. And this is, I think, the first time since 2002 that the artist is exhi exhibiting in Lagos. I think he's uh, put together quite an interesting body of works. He's got three different mediums that he's using here. The coal series that, that's behind me. And basically, it's all about what he found in Enugu. Enugu has been called the coal city, the coal, the city, the state, because it had so much coal deposits, which have been deposited over millions of years. And in fact, when the colonials came, they actually found it, and they started sending it by train and shipping it abroad. So really, the coal works have got they're like little packages, and the packages are showing that the items are being exported. What is noticeable in the works exhibited is Eva's ability to maximize the effectual sense of numbers, directional thrust, tenseness, and color to emphasize our ties as humans to nature. And these enthusiasts are blown away. Uh, I'll tell you what attracts me, the colors attract me. Also, the medium that he's using is different, so you know it's quite interesting. And um, I just like the colors. And some of the shapes are quite interesting as well. I've never seen anything like it, so for me, it's new and very modern. Um, I'm not. I'm more into the traditional art, but you know, it's nice to see the different mediums that people are using and, and the colours and the way he puts it together. It's interesting. It's using Indian's material, jute in the main, woven and then coloured in spectacular ways to make specific eye-catching artifacts. Nothing is imported other than the dyes 
and it captures a lot of our culture and our attitude and the, our choice of colors. You need a lot of space to be able to, dis, to de demonstrate it because they're quite large pieces of work, but they're original and um, they're not conventional art. Time is immeasurable and constantly in motion. But Eva Abodo has found a way of counting and making the moment stand still. Next on the news at 10, Stan Warinka wins first French Open title at Roland Garros. That's on Sports News. Stay with us.